Good morning. This is Belinda with Belinda's Bobbles, and welcome to day two of the yarn crawl. Um, we had a great time yesterday. I even had a special guest. If you didn't see, um, I had someone who popped in, my brother Bill, and we ran into him in pretty much almost all the shops. So <laughs> if you haven't seen day one, go back and take a look at that. Also, um, for day one, if you go over and comment on the Yarn Crawl, North Texas Yarn Crawl 2024 Day 1. Uh, comment on it and you will be entered for a chance at a drawing for the Potiversary. Yesterday was my first Potiversary for Belinda's Baubles and I wanted to celebrate that. I've got a little something to send out. So if you want to be entered, just go enter in your uh, any kind of a comment on Day 1 of North Texas Yarn Crawl. Today, I believe, is April 22nd, 2024. I, it's just you and me today because I don't have anyone else joining me. Um, unfortunately, Sam is not well enough to be able to go. Plus, he has some appointments that he has to do today. So, it's just you and me. So, come along. Crawl with me. Let's have a great time. We are doing a lot of driving today. So be glad that you're getting to skip that part because we are heading to Dallas. We're starting in Louisville and then heading over to Dallas, McKinney, and hopefully Farmersville. I'm getting a little later start than I was planning on, so we'll see what happens and see how quickly we can get there without um, losing out on the fun. Yesterday's video, I know... I, I missed some things that I thought I had recorded and I didn't because I was having so much fun talking and visiting with everybody. <laughs> and that's a lot of the far yarn crawl as it is. I apologize for the sound in the car yesterday. I'm hoping moving the microphone down a little bit that this will be better because I know I got some scratchiness yesterday and I apologize for that. So, I don't have anything special as far as loca other locations, so let's see what we can find. I know you can't see me real well in the car, but I am all in Charming You today. Just wanted to mention that. I've got two, uh, I've got a little mini advent um, going on from a Halloween with the litmus cow, and then I'm wearing my um, advent, from Christmas advent top. Uh, that is the, I just looked this up. Why can't I remember it? All right, I'll put it. I'll put it down below what it is because I haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> so let's get me some coffee. Let's get on the road, and I'm going to be listening to a book since I'm in here on my own. And I'll put the information down below. I'm really loving my Libby app um, through the library, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that on the podcast. All right, let's crawl. I hope you are comfortable and ready for a long day or at least a long video because I needed to get some gas. I needed some coffee. So I figured I'd take you guys to Bucky's to start the day out. Bucky's is just a huge, large Texas. Um, started but it's going in other parts of the country now a uh, gas station with food and beverages and clean bathrooms and it's just it's something else to see and I needed some coffee so I thought I would get this and some breakfast so I ended up getting a brisket taco for breakfast this is all jerky different flavors of jerky and Bucky is everywhere <laughs> that reminds me of the Stuckies from whenever I was a kid except on overdrive speaking of driving let's go to Farmersville this is going to be about a 45 minute drive you get just a few seconds and then we're going to be at Fiber Ladies brand new location in Louisville they've moved over from a industrial park 
into a little strip mall area right on the road so it's easy to get to easy to find and I'm excited to see their new location Fiber Lady is a manufacturer they make um, mainly bamboo yarns and bamboo mixed yarns sorry and we're going to see the fiber man Dave because the fiber lady was actually at work with her regular job aren't these bowls great the person they got the bowls from also made these Swifts, solid wood Swifts, and the Swifts are only $50. I figured I'd better get a drink. This is actually my second go at recording this. I just recorded the whole thing for you guys, and it didn't save. I don't know if it's my computer, my internet, or what's out to get me, but something is definitely out to get me. But never fear, I'm going to get this done. <laughs> okay, so back to the yarn. Let's take a look at all this bamboo. Got different weights, different mixes, different dyes. And Dave makes all these in the back room. Now their shop doesn't just have their own yarns. They do also carry um, some yarns that are some commercial yarns as well. So if you're needing something besides uh, and you're in the area and you're wanting something that's not the bamboo, He's got you covered on that too. Anything from lace weight on up to about worsted, I think. I don't remember seeing any chunky. All these needles back here, they have such a great selection. And I love the Bouncy Boo. This is a bamboo sock yarn. And I've used it before to make um, gloves for Shauna. The swirls are just so pretty. And there's some of the, um, I think that was Cascade. And here's Hemp. I don't remember seeing that before, but he now has some hemp lace. Another manufacturer, uh, yarn manufacturer went out of business, so he bought theirs, over dyed it, um, and rebranded it and made it his own. That's what the prairie is. I love that he's repurposed something that may not have found a home otherwise. There's the minis. I've been using these minis and I got me some more um, for heels and toes. I cannot seem to wear through them. They're, it's working really great for um, working with the socks. And of course, wonderful clearance area. Beads. And there's such beautiful Stellina in these um, yarns here. I kept trying to get it to pick up, but I just couldn't quite show you. You can see it a little bit in the pinks. But they just sparkled like diamonds. Back in this area is more of the commercial yarns and the books. Isn't that a fun one? And whenever he has knit night fiber time, they um, all of these um, center areas are on wheels so they can push them back and open this up to be able to have fiber time. 
Speaking of fiber, look at all of this. I, I don't know of any other store in the Metroplex that has this much roving and tops. If you are a weaver, you are not a, so much a weaver, I'm sorry. <clears throat> if you um, are looking for anything to do with different textures, different um, fibers, they've got you covered there. I wanted to see these Forte interchangeable um, needles by Chai Gu. I'm not going to spend the money on the Chai Gu. I, I have perfectly good needles. I know I have perfectly good needles. But I can still drool. Those were covered up, but he had an open one in the back that I got to go look at. Isn't this beautiful? On to the rest of the Chai Goos. Large selection there. A couple of looms. Even a drop spindle to go with all the fiber. Now this is the back room area. One of the machines was down so he wasn't able to show us how it all works. Um, but if you go back to the video from last year uh, on the yarn crawl, he did give us a tour in the old location. And you can see how all of these machines operate to make the yarns. But he did. we were talking about the fact that I'm wanting to work with the drop spindling and he was showing me some of the drafting and so he did start this one up just to show us a little bit of um, the drafting through there. I think I've got the right term. Apologize if I don't. Well I better go check out. This is just store number one and get in the car and we are heading to Dallas next. I'm just thankful we're not in the traffic on the other side. It is standstill over there. So here is Knit Dallas. They opened up last year, and last year was their first crawl and just had their first uh, anniversary over the winter. Can you tell they love pink and orange? <laughs> Let me get my notes here. Um, Meredith is the owner here, and she really does love natural fibers. Got some John Arbin there, and the Wooly Wools. There is some superwash here, but um, in the store, but not a lot. So there's a lot of things in here I can't work with because of my allergies, but I brought Bill out here because he does love the woolly wool um, yarns and he has really enjoyed, I think he's been out here a couple of times since I, took, I brought him out the first time. And that is the one of the cowls from uh, the yarn crawl that we just passed, sorry. <laughs> I got distracted myself. And then we've got Wanderlock Yarns. This is their trunk show. And I'll bring you back to this wall in just a moment, but that's some of their store colors there, especially at the top. And let's go take a peek. These were, I think, the kits for make, uh, not that, but above it in the paper bags. These are some of the kits for the yarn crawl cowls. Okay, so these are their colorways over here. I guess neighborhood yarns, something along those lines. Uh, but they don't have it just in one weight. Something um, unique here is the store colorway is in sock weight all the way up uh, to chunky. There's so much to see through here.
I love her little signs where she's got all of her information on there for the different yarns. And the name on this is hilarious. And this is some Farmer's Daughter yarn. Or Farmer's Daughter fibers. Sorry, excuse me while I stretch a little bit. Ah. As I said, this is my second time through um, narrating this. <laughs> I got my knitting from Olive Book here whenever they had their first anniversary and had a um, had done a, a vest along that I participated with. I brought Bill out. He also made a vest and I brought him out and he actually won the drawing for it. First time in the store. Misha and Puff. I've never heard of that brand before. I do need to look it up. I apologize if there's some extra clicking in anything. I've got my computer up at a weird angle. Look at all these needles and even down below here all sorts of sets locked away. And here's an Oslo hat, Karen. I really do like that Oslo hat. I may have to make one. And this is chicken coop um, yarns. She had a trunk show as well. And this is a wall down here of Madeline Tosh. Like I said, there's some superwash, just um, not as much as you find in other stores or other yarn shops. Now that I've shown you around, it's time that I get to go look around myself and see what I can find. There were some ladies in there knitting and were so gracious and kind and it's just such a relaxing place. This plied yarn, again it's a woolly wool but oh it's beautiful. I wish I could work with it. My hand was already starting to itch, <laughs> but I had to touch it. And they have a um, shop colorway. I think it's Apple Orchard. Here we go again. We are off to McKinney. Take a look on the right there. There's McKinney Knittery. And we're going to go past the um, town square and drive around back. There's the courthouse on the left. And we're going to drive around back and park. They have this gorgeous mural back here. Parking on the side of the street is just too busy. It's great parking around back and it is free parking and you get to see that beautiful mural. Okay, let's go see what we can find. McKinney Knittery shares her space with a dry goods area as well. So you get yarn and fabric all in one location. Can you just breathe it in? She always gets some really cool um, t-shirts going. And there's Ginger. I had to check out the basin by the front window. There's always something cool in there. And there's some hedgehog fibers. And these yarns just reminded me of some speckled Easter eggs. All across the front here, there is Lucky Knitter yarns, and she just has a large selection of Lucky Knitter. 
in a couple of different um, weights. Now something I've noticed is a lot of um, color work themes and color yarns that could be used for color work. I always have to see what she's got going up on. She's always hanging something up new up there. But Ginger seems to really love color work and so you can tell that from a lot of the yarns that she selected. Okay, up there in that area take a look screenshot it if you need to but that um, sign up there tells you all about um, different weights of yarn I've actually got a screenshot of it and um, what put what you put together if you're putting a couple of different ones together to make different things as far as different weights it's handy to have all right we got spin cycle yarns See, more color work sweaters. See what else we can find. Some double knit or double Sunday. And here we have some blue sky fiber. There's even some of their minis, I think. Yep, there's some of their minis. They're so cute. And highlighter. Have you seen the heritage highlighter? Then Labian Ami or Amy. Um, she has their, her yarns not just on this side but on the other and Amy actually came to McKinney Knittery this last year I was working that day so I couldn't make it over there but from Paris to McKinney um, Texas that's quite a trip I've never seen these Edo yarns before I'll have to I need to look these up and see what uh, see what it says they're beautiful and I think this sweater was actually made from the Edo yarns more La Bien Ami and then back in the classroom area is usually where she has her trunk shows she'd already packed one up from the weekend but I took a peek and I took you with me for Twisted Ambitions yarn. I've never heard of it before. Isn't it beautiful? I did end up getting a mini. You've got the sail area in the back. I always love to find the sail area. Some Quince and Co. You just never know in any of these shops what you're going to find right around the corner. You've got the classroom area in the back and then over here all these chairs and couches. This is where she has her fiber time and anyone's welcome to come in and sit and knit and visit and shop and just have a great time. You can also look through all of this fabric. What do you want to make next? Down underneath their cabinet here is always something different and something fun. Got some fortes, but some of the color work cards. I found them again. And isn't this a great way to display all the bags? Okay, so now that I've run you through, I'm going to take a look myself and see what I can find. And I'm still going towards the reds. Look at this. Oh, that's probably hot pink. <laughs> I 
I love this little sign and thank you very much Ginger and we are now heading to Farmersville Texas it was about a 35 minute drive and at Farmersville you have two different yarn shops on this one square yarn and you there on the right and as you turn into the square facing yarn and you at the other end is fiber circle which I think has been in that location for about 15 20 years <clears throat> sorry I'm gonna have to drink some more water well you go on in I'll meet you inside how's that since you guys are the ones that are going with me on the yarn crawl today so here we are in yarn and you And it's probably a good thing that she actually has some drinks over there to purchase. Oh, what are we going to see first? As soon as you come in the door, the chick that knits. And she has a really large selection of the chick that knits here. And there's some minis over here. And there were some kits. Oh, and there's even more besides this. I'm thinking the chick that knits is out of Oklahoma. All these great bags and some amigurumi. Here's more of the chick that knits. And this next table over here, I found a bee, how's that? But this table over here, this is assigned pulling yarns. Some needle stoppers. She always has some fun needle stoppers. And some more great yarns for color work here. Now Stacy has her shop set up to where she has the fingering weights over on the left hand side. And this is what the shop used to look like as a JC Penney's. And then over on the right hand side, it's by the weight along the walls. Here's her Madeline Tosh. And tell me, does that look like tribbles or pom poms to you? I'm seeing tribbles. Now, Stacy loves to make socks. And you can tell it by all of her yarns that she has through here. She also loves self-striping socks. Because you definitely see more of the hand-dyed self-striping yarns in this store than I've seen in any of the others in the area. She also has quite a few different um, samples of different um, Texas hand dyed yarns. Aren't those hooks cute? And I found the sale area. Are y'all getting tired of me yet? <laughs> I feel like I've already said this because I already have. Okay, love the highlighters, but um, the yarn here in the chicken, if you ever make it in there, you need to ask Stacy the story behind the black velvet yarn that's in the chicken. Ask her about, is it trash lady or garbage lady yarn? It's a great story, I just can't do it justice. How's this for some inspiration? And this pink top up here has caught my eye. I couldn't tell what the name of the um, it was, but guess what? I've got some Malabrigos. Look over here, this purple one. 
I had to go look. And I did get the name of it. It is the Kate, uh, Caplet tank. It's all done in one piece, starting at the collar, I was told. Okay, there's also all of these great um, samples of the knitting the, um, shoot, my mind just went blank and it's sitting there in front of me. Knitting the National Parks. There we go. They've also done some capitals, uh, or not capitals, but some cities, big cities and things like that. And she even had some different um, kits for it as well. Let's see what I can find. I think I might be able to find something interesting to show you. Okay, those were cute. This is a... Mr. and Mrs. Grandma, Grandma and Grandpa, Uncle Sam's. Ready for the 4th of July. And they, she had those for sale. What can I show you? Let's see. Okay, this looks promising. Of course, it's a sock set because we're in the sock area or the sock and fingering area. And this is a paint can of sock yarn. Koi goo? I don't know. I've got to look it up. It's called reindeer. I wonder if it's the col if that's the colorway or if it's actually reindeer yarn. Okay, well let's head on out. We're going to go down to the other end of the um, square there at Farmersville, and we're going to go in and meet up with Diane at Fiber Circle. And this has to be the largest yarn store I've ever been in. And she has, for her trunk show, these looms. They are triangular and rectangular modular looms. And I've always thought weaving would be so much fun. And this looks a little more doable for me. It's got nails all the way around the outside edges. And look at what's possible. All sorts of notions and needles up at the front of the store. And then there's yarn everywhere. Literally, there's yarn everywhere. I don't know that if it would be possible for me to ever wander through here and see everything. And it's not just on the first floor. Those stairs go up to a second floor. We'll be up there in a few minutes too. And there's just so much to see. If there's ever a yarn that um, you're working on a project and it's discontinued, there's a chance that she might have it. Or she might be able to tell you where to find it. Diane has a lot of knowledge with this. All back in this corner is Noro. There's just so much. And I know that for some people this would make them anxious. And this is the last shop. So if that's you, go ahead, fast forward or um, click over because we're going to just continue exploring. 
I feel like a kid in grandma's attic. You know that feeling? Just kind of exploring and wondering if you're really supposed to be or not. And I always find different um, yarns that I've never seen anywhere else. Hmm. These, this is from uh, Uruguay. And it was so soft. The colors are were unique too. Okay, so let's go on upstairs and take a look up there. Okay, let's see what we can see up here. I think we've got some acrylics over in this area. And I didn't even make it all the way down to the end, but that, here you go. You can look down and see where we've been. Plus it goes underneath the, um, where we're standing. And then let's go take a look over on the other side as well. Make sure you duck your head. And back through here, there's even some cones of yarn. First time I ever came here, she had some sitting areas set up back here. And some there were some ladies here that were just sitting around talking and knitting and everything. We had a great time. But look at all of this. I'm trying to go fairly faster here because it's coming up on five o'clock and I know she's wanting to go home. So I don't want to keep her late. During yarn crawl it goes, it's open every day and a lot of these shops are one person shops. I'm so appreciative of them taking the time because we've all got different schedules trying to get everywhere. Here's another view down below. Oh. Okay, so if you're still with me at this point, don't forget to go over to um, day one's video and leave a comment for the Potiversary drawing. Let's see, let's look through here. This gives you kind of a view of what the downstairs aisles are like. And there's just so much to see. This was three skeins all together. They were hooked together. It's kind of like a rag doll of yarn. Okay, well this is pretty much the end of it for me today in the shop. And then next, I had a long drive, about an hour and a half drive to get back home from Farmersville, especially with five o'clock traffic in the Metroplex. So I decided to go over to a local um, ice cream shop that's just off the square next to their granary. It's called Hibbets. I had seen it before but I hadn't gone in. They make all their ice cream there and they even have 21 and older flavors. I ended up getting a coconut and pineapple milkshake. It was so good. So if you have a chance, stop in there if you're on the yarn crawl. All right, well, I am headed.